There's some things. There are some things which over the years have been like marks of identification for sanctified people. And that form of praise among us apostolic people is one of the indicators that we are kin to the saints in the Church of God in Christ. <laughs> That's one of their real trademarks. It's good for them, good for us too. Amen. We're all one great Savior's children. Yes. Yes. Talk about it. Man. Oh, Talk yes. About it. And I thank the Lord for all the people who are baptized with the Holy Ghost. All of them, all of them. Red, yellow, black, white. Symbols of God, Church of God in Christ, P-A-W. Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever they're baptized with the Holy Ghost, I'm glad for them. I will call your attention now to the word of the Lord as is found in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter, starting out in chapter one, then we're going to go to chapter two. The disciples of Jesus were gathered together and they we're told by Jesus not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which was the Holy Ghost. When he had spoken unto his disciples in verse number nine, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. These apostles saw Jesus going back to heaven. Verse 12, and they returned, then returned they unto Jerusalem from the Mount of Olivet, Mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. When they were come in, this is the apostles, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas, the brother of James. Must have been a big room where either they were crowded. <laughs> Watch this. These all, the apostles, continued with one accord in prayer and supplication because we were waiting for the Holy Ghost. And there's nothing wrong with waiting and praying and petitioning God while one is seeking the Holy Ghost. With the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren, with Jesus' brothers. This group was waiting in the upper room where some of the apostles lived, waiting for the Holy Ghost. I feel disposed to talk to you today some because today is Pentecost Sunday called in England, I think, Whit Sunday. But in chapter two, remember they were with one accord in prayer and supplication. They were entreating God regularly to bless them. In verse number two, chapter two rather, verse one, 
when the day of Pentecost was fully come, coming out of the, the Jewish order as a time to celebrate the blessings of God upon their agriculture, particularly I'd say their fields and maybe their trees too, a time of celebration and thanksgiving and worship for God, to God for his goodness comes out of the Jewish, the Old Testament order, the day of Pentecost. It was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. Yes. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. These were to be saints filled with the Holy Ghost. First, there came a sound, a sound. All right, all right, Bishop. Remember now, it is the day. Mm -hmm. This group of approximately 120 people is all on one accord. Yeah. Speak, Bishop. Speak, sir. This is not a two or three day occurrence. Thank you. Thank you, man. It's the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Everybody is on one accord. They have one heart, one mind. Suddenly there came a sound. Everything is singular so far. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it the sound filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, divided tongues, like as of fire. And it, singular again, and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost single day one accord one place a sound cloven tongues it sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. One day, one people, one room, one sound, one set of tongues, one Holy Spirit that fills everybody. All right? They all got the same thing in the same place on the same day, the same way. There were not three or four different Holy Ghosts. No, sir. And there weren't four or five different ways to get it. They all received the same spirit in the same place on the same day from the same source. Oh, Jesus. Now, please don't say you have the Holy Ghost 
but yours doesn't speak. All right, now. Preach, 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 preach. All right. Preach. All right. Yes, Lord Jesus. If you've ever received it, mm -hmm. it spoke. No speech, no spirit. I know this second chapter of the book of Acts is enough to study for I don't know how long. So I can't deal with it all today. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. Devout men out of every nation under heaven. When this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, that they were confused, mm -hmm. because every man heard them speak in his own language. Now this is not what you call unknown tongues. This is other tongues. They were languages which were spoken by other people in various parts of the world. And they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another Behold, look, are not all these which speak Galileans? Didn't they all come from one part of the world, one country? And don't they have a common language? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea and Cappadocia, They're speaking Pontan and Asian and Phrygian. All came from Galilee, Pamphylian. Some spoke in Egyptian. Some spoke Libyan. Some spoke the language of the Cyrenese. Some spoke Latin, Rome. Some spoke Hebrew. Some spoke Cretan, 11, 11. Some spoke Arabian. All these different languages were being spoken on the day of Pentecost by folks who couldn't speak those languages ordinarily. They weren't doing it from what they had learned. No, sir. They hadn't gone to school and been taught. No, sir. Hmm. They were speaking as the Spirit, Spirit gave them ability to speak. That's the way the Holy Ghost comes. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? When people don't understand speaking in tongues when a person gets the Holy Ghost, he may or she may ask, 
what does it mean? And people have different ideas about what it means when they hear it and haven't had the experience and haven't been taught. They wonder, what is it? When the then Sister Willie Bell Fort, now Sister Willie Bell Burrell of Muskegon, Michigan, she got the Holy Ghost in the rural area of Tuskegee, Alabama. There was a lady apparently who had heard that when you get salvation, when you get the Holy Ghost, you're getting ready to die. Mm -hmm. this, this lady, as we worked with Sister Willie, she sat by and observed her being filled and speaking in tongues. So the best she could make out of it was, she told some neighbors later, she got that dying kind. She didn't know what it was. So she thought she got religion and she had been taught that you get when you're getting ready to die. Uh -huh. She says, Willie Bell wasn't getting ready to die. She was a young girl, I think, in high school then. She later on got married and had about 12 kids, so she wasn't getting ready to die. <laughs> she was really getting ready to live. But the lady didn't understand it. So on the day of Pentecost, the people who observed the people being filled with the Holy Ghost, they want to know, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. Others, verse 13, others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. They're just drunk. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. They're drunk. You got that Holy Ghost. What have you lost your mind? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of losing our mind. When we're filled with the Holy Ghost, it's altogether different. All together, These folks thought they were drunk. Mm. But Peter, standing up with the 11, it's interesting to me how that, along with the rest of his sisters and brothers, when they got filled with the Holy Ghost, they were sitting down. Remember, the Holy Ghost, the wind came where, and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Peter got the Holy Ghost, we can assume, sitting down. When it comes time to explain it, he stands up. Hallelujah. With the 11. And lifted up his voice and said, you men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and listen to my words. These are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. They're not drunk. Mm hmm You want to know what the Holy Ghost is, don't ask somebody who doesn't have it. Ask somebody who knows about it, then they can tell you. Reverend, Jack, Reverend Jackson, what about this Holy Ghost? Reverend Jackson doesn't have it. 
Reverend Jackson can't really tell you about it. Ask somebody who has it. Peter said, they're not drunk. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. He went way back to the Old Testament. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and I'm going to do it because I want to. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, God wants you to have the Holy Ghost. He wants you to have it. Any of you that desire it, you can't desire it as much as God wants to give it to you. Any of us in here who want to go to heaven, we don't want to go to heaven as much as God wants to take us there. Lord, I thank you. The Holy Ghost isn't something that God gives to people begrudgingly. He wants us to have it. Preach, Bishop, preach, preach. He wants to change our lives. Preach. He wants to bless us. God wants to lift us and turn us around. God wants us to have it. Preach. It isn't hard to get if you go at it the right way. Some person may say, I've been wanting the Holy Ghost a long time. I've been seeking it a long, a long time. Not because God doesn't want you to have it. You probably need to change your method. God wants you filled with the Holy Ghost. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That's going to be a reaction to God's initial action. Mm -hmm. What you shall do is because of what God will do. God wills to fill you, and as a result of the filling, then you shall prophesy. God works first, and you come next. You don't prophesy and get God, you get God and then prophesy. Hallelujah. You don't heal and get God, you get God and then heal. You don't speak in tongues and get God. You get God, then speak. It's what God wants first. It's the will before the shall. Are you noticing that? I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Don't try to get ahead of God. Got too many folks now that are trying to prophesy and they don't have the will. They're trying to make the shall work haven't got the will. 
Wait till you get the spirit. Let God lead you. Let God be out front. Then you'll find it won't be so hard doing what you're trying to do in religion. You don't have the proper help until you got the Holy Ghost. With what I know now, I wouldn't be more trying to pass with that temple. If I didn't have the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't be trying. How are you going to cast out devils and don't have the Holy Ghost? How are you going to prophesy and foresee the future and don't have the Holy Ghost? How are you going to heal without the Holy Ghost? I will pour out of my spirit and then you shall prophesy after that. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Verse 18. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, watch the language, mm -hmm. I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy after my will. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I will show signs and wonders. Now, verse 22. So on the day of Pentecost, you men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, so on. Verse 23. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you've taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. He gets right to Jesus. First, they're trying to get an understanding as to what's going on. Jesus, you killed him. God raised him up from the dead. It wasn't possible that death could hold him. The next person he mentions is David. Mm -hmm. David speaks on his wise concerning the resurrection of Jesus. First he mentions Joel. To explain the Holy Ghost. Goes from Joel to Jesus. And from Jesus to David. All right? Now watch this. Verse 32. This Jesus has God raised up for up with all our witnesses. I about, I about to say students. No. Folks, listen. What does this mean? Why are these people Speaking in tongues. He goes first to Joel, next to Jesus, and then to David. It's interesting. He says nothing about Peter, and Peter just got filled. He doesn't mention James or John. He mentions Joel. He reaches way back to the Old Testament and gets an Old Testament witness. Goes from him to Jesus and then back to another Old Testament witness. Doesn't even mention the fact he just got it. What's he saying? The witness of scripture is bigger than my own. Peter knew that heaven and earth would pass away, but the word of God would not. And the scriptures are bigger than our own personal testimony. Yes. It's the word of God bigger than all of us. Word of God. 
the word of God that lives and abides forever. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. It's interesting to me. He could have said, let me tell you about it. I just got it. Mm. He said, this is what the prophet Joel prophesied. What Jesus died to bring and what David prophesied about the man Jesus. That's where it's at. Watch this. Help yourself, Bishop. Help yourself. Thanks, Elder Bryant. He told me to help myself. <laughs> when he gets to Jesus, verse 33, he says, Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father, promise of the Holy Ghost he has shed for this is talking about Jesus which you now see and hear this thing you are puzzled about it came from Jesus the man you killed the man you said it not the man who hung on the cross and was buried, that man has risen from the dead and has been seated on high and from his throne in glory, he poured this out that you see and hear. The Holy Ghost came from Jesus. You killed him and thought you finished him. Not so, Jews. Not so. He has risen from the dead, gone to heaven, and is now pouring out this that you see and hear. He is most alive. <laughs> then he contrasts David and Jesus lets him know David died and his grave was still with them. Verse 37, verse 37. On the day of Pentecost, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 38, will you read it please? That all happened on the day of Pentecost. How? They said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They're all standing up together. None of them challenges Peter. Peter said, repent. Be sorry for your sins. Be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. 
forgiveness for your sins, and you shall receive the same gift. And folks, the formula hasn't changed in 2,000 years. It is generally accepted among churchmen that the day of Pentecost marked the birthday of the church. Her doctrine hasn't changed since she was born. Did you hear what I said? Amen. The doctrine of the church hasn't changed since the day she was born. Listen, and I'm about finished. The formation period for a baby in a mother's womb hasn't changed from nine months since the days of Jesus and John the Baptist. And they were the same thing before that. When you read the New Testament, you can find that the, the formation period for a baby in a mother's womb in Jesus and John the Baptist's time was nine months. You can read that from the scriptures. That's right. That's right. 2,000 years ago, it took nine months for a baby to normally form in a mother's womb. It's the same thing today, 2009. Yes. Same thing, nine months. Am I right, ladies? Amen. It's still nine months. It's still nine months. It was nine months, 2,000 years ago. Are you listening? Amen. Don't go to sleep over now. We'll put out some don't church the church blue. I don't want the church blue in red now. Any of you that might have a, a restaurant menu in your purse, don't you pull that restaurant menu out now? It's not dinner time now. And your car will be out there, I think. We got some safety folks watching. It might be new, you just got it yesterday. You can try it out later. Now, 2,000 years ago, what is it, the gestation period of a baby was nine months. 2009 AD is still nine months. What have I spoken to you about from the Bible today? What happened the day the church was born? Folk were filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke in tongues, and sinners were commanded to be baptized, repent, and be baptized in water in Jesus' name and receive the Holy Ghost. 2,000 years ago, that was the birthday. The church is 2,000 years old now. The standard still is the same. Church, 2,000 years old, how should men be baptized? In Jesus' name. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost when the church was born. Should they get the Holy Ghost? Yes. That's what happened when the church was born. Don't tell folks they don't need it. Don't tell them it's only for the apostles. That's misinformation. The Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost and is still falling. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. 
Have you got it? Have you got it like the Bible said? Have you got it? Have you got it like the Bible said? When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind fill all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared in them cloven tongues that as a fire, it sat upon each of them. They were all filled where the Holy Ghost began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Back to the Church of God in Christ, and we're very similar to them, they're very similar to us. The song the saints in the Church of God in Christ sang years ago, this is the Church of God in Christ. This is the Church of God in Christ. You cannot join it. You have to be born in it. This is the church of God in Christ. You can't join the church. Preach, preach. I'm a Johnson. I didn't join the Johnson family. I was born into it. You can't join the church. You have to be born in it. Oh, Jesus. There's some things going around in the world religion today that don't belong to it. You won't read it in the New Testament. Anybody ever join the church? 